Bullshit Attempts at Salvaging Menarchism, another saga involving a local LP chapter. Originally published at libertyunderattack.com on March, March 23rd, 2016, and read to you by the author. Introduction Samuel Edward Conkin's quote from his New Libertarian Manifesto has become a staple for Liberty Under Attack, so we won't burden you with reading it once again. Nonetheless, we place a heavy emphasis on consistency and have made some enemies in the process. Although in our, con in our constant attempt to be philosophically consistent, it makes it that much easier to handle criticisms of our work. One of those enemies made was the McLean County Libertarian Party, MCLP, when I went to one of their meetings on July 7, 2015. I wore my LUA volunteer shirt, but other than that I went as the gray man and kept my views on the political means suppressed. That is, for the time being, until I got home. It wasn't until months after when a reader posted the aforementioned field trip report on their Facebook page that I got the f initial feedback. It consisted of phrases like, You can't know us from one interaction to, We were fine with anarchists and you were welcome to come to our meetings. Now I'm paraphrasing. After they discovered that article, I figured it was time to start stirring the pot. I started a 2016 Illinois voter unregistration drive and posted it on the MCLP Facebook page. Their response was priceless. Uh, the link to uh, the actual comment thread is available in the original article. MCLP response, quote, This is silliness. If you want to uncouple from government, then don't pay your taxes, avoid public utilities, and go off the grid. If, however, you participate in a society that uses public services, your only hope is to participate at the ballot box. You're either on the bus or you're off the bus. End quote. My response, quote, No, what silly and insane is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result? And the only hope is through the ballot box? If that was true, there would be no hope. For me, on the other hand, I prefer to take the initiative in restoring my own liberty without having to subjugate myself before those who imagine themselves to be our rulers. The way I do that is through the freedom umbrella of direct action, end quote. Following my response, a reader stated, Maybe you should read the law first before you start issuing orders, followed by my initial post on the event page listing the legal citations for Illinois. Apparently, it would seem to be the case that bad role modeling is endemic to reformists, as also evidenced by the fact that Kyle Reardon was accused by James Babb of similarly issuing, order, issuing orders to the audience during their informal debate last year. This was posted from the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action FUDA Facebook page, so I wasn't found out completely until that same reader posted my Behind Enemy Lines, The Dangers of the Libertarian Party article. It was evident at that point I even got a friend request from the chairman of the Lollipop Guild. I don't remember his title again, Partyarchy is a Bitch. As you can see, I've been sparring with these people for the better part of a year. That being said, I continued my attempt to decrease the membership within the Libertarian Party gang. Background Note, out of respect for his privacy and to protect the guilty, I will not be using his real name and the screenshots will be redacted. Henceforth, he will be called John. In 2014, a friend and I held an informational protest against the war on drugs, and the only person that showed up in clear opposition to narcotics prohibition was the same person that we will see advocating for political rulers. At that time, I was a loose constitutionalist and we got along just fine. We never saw each other in person after that initial encounter, but we've exchanged conversations on fascist book on a few occasions. Soft Censorship of Dissenting Opinions by a Statist in Denial With the Dog and Pony Show, Elections in Full Swing, the Cancel Your Voter Registration page, and my Anti-Libertarian Libertarian Party trilogy have gotten a lot of hits. That said, I came across the screenshot below and posted the aforementioned Behind Enemy Lines, The Dangers of the Libertarian Party article. Now, by that time, I was taking screenshots of the interaction. That had already been deleted, but we'll get to that momentarily. The original, uh, the original status if you're as disappointed as I am that so many people in our community actually support Donald Trump, then help be part of the solution. Join the Libertarian Party and support fiscal responsibility, individual empowerment, and social tolerance. Hashtag make America sane again. Initially, there are a few problems. First off, he claims that joining the anti-libertarian Libertarian Party is part of the solution when there is no factual evidence to show that they have accomplished anything. Rather, there is substantial evidence to the contrary. As evidenced by the image above, the LP was established in 1971, and since that time, government power has increased substantially. Secondly, the support fiscal responsibility, individual empowerment, and social tolerance part sounds exactly like what the libertarian, what libertarian leaning folks would say. As I've stated previously, the LP is libertarian leaning, so this comes as no surprise. At this juncture, why not also say when, some, when someone is conservative leaning or progressive leaning? After I posted that article, I sent me a fascist book message which said, quote, 
Shane, I'm trying to promote liberty just as you are. You are welcome in Libertarian Party at any time, and you are welcome to attend meetings that have a respectful intellectual discussion about various libertarian philosophies, but I don't care for you calling our efforts dangerous when I'm trying to make minarchism and, an an and anarchism more accessible to people. I understand and respect your opinion, but I'll remove those comments. ANCAPs are welcome in the LP, but attempts to limit membership are not helpful to either of our causes. Suffice it to say, I was not surprised in the least bit. There are a few things I want to discuss in regards to this message. First off, promoting limited coercion and limited theft is not admirable, and it is not even within the market selection of promoting liberty. There is a vast difference, and that distinction cannot be made enough. Secondly, as should have been evidenced by my diatribe on the LP, I want nothing to do with his wannabe gang. And as always, I'm open to respectful intellectual discussion as long as it is productive. Though, as you will see in the following screenshots, it is not possible with Sir John. Thirdly, in the amount of time that it took him to delete my post and message me, he wouldn't even, even have had enough time to get through the, so much as the introduction. Judging the book by its cover, eh? A touch of intellectual dishonesty much? So much for their ability to, <laughs> their ability to hear dissenting opinions. Shane 1, LP 0. Since I'll be more than happy to keep score, I'll also cover two last points real briefly. He states that, I'm trying to make anarchism and minarchism more accessible to people. Now, something I do not tolerate is when people muddy up the waters of consistent libertarianism, voluntarism, with their advocacy for the political means. That sends an inconsistent message to those who are interested in the idea of freedom and liberty and gives them the wrong idea that voting and running for office are still okay to do as libertarians, or even as anarchists. At that point, why shouldn't the LP make political alliances with the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters while handing out endorsements to them like they are candy? In summation, he was actually spot on in the last sentence of, this, of his message. I sure as hell am trying to limit membership into the LP gang. Damn straight. I would rather recruit disgruntled voters to the idea of voluntarism rather than deceitfully tricking them into joining yet another political party. Only in the case of the LP, they will just see their, <laughs> their time, money, and effort wasted in a much more measurable manner and continued growth of government despite their efforts. In actuality, the LP serves the same function as the Oath Breakers and the Three Inchers, namely to sucker people into lining the pockets of what the LP's own founder, the late David Nolan, described as a very timid organization. Let's con continue to my responses. Quote, The anti-libertarian libertarian party has not accomplished anything since their inception. Samuel Edward Conkin predicted that in his debate with Robert Poole, the founder of Reason Magazine, in 1985. I can provide a link if you wish to examine the consistent application of libertarianism. The state has only gotten more tyrannical. The Libertarian Party still advocates for limited violence and coercion, regardless of what platform you look at it. The LP is no different than the Republicans and Democrats, unless you count whipping the slaves less as progress. I don't advocate for political rulers, and it is inconsistent for any Libertarian to do so. It violates both the non-aggression principle and self-ownership. I respectfully wish to limit any membership into the Libertarian, libertarian Party gang and to draw a major distinction between Big L Libertarianism and Small L Consistent Libertarianism. If you wish to create the freedom you desire in your own life outside of subjugating yourself before those who claim to be our rulers, I'd recommend you check out the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action and the Direct Action series on Liberty Under Attack Radio, end quote. My responses couldn't have made him too happy, and we're about to see another instance of him not even opening up the links that I presented to him. Quote, uh, he says, uh, what purpose do you serve then, just a troll? End quote. Uh, I state, I explicitly stated my purpose. I respectfully wish to limit any membership into the Libertarian Party gang and draw a major distinction between Big L Libertarianism and Small L Consistent Libertarianism. I hardly ever troll, and this isn't one of those instances. And any time I do, it's to socialists. He states, quote, I hardly see what you're doing as a, freedom um, as a freedom umbrella. Umbrella implies that you're accepting some views outside of your own. If you wish to scare people away from my organization and from, and from activism, then please do so on your own page, end quote. That's the final screenshot in the sequence, but there are some interesting observations to be made. If you would have taken the time to read the first paragraph of the FUDA, you would understand the goal. It explicitly states, quote, Please keep in mind that there are no value judgments being made here, particularly with regard to the efficacy of the tactics and strategies listed, for such decisions are to be made by each individual's judgment in examining and testing the methods that appeal to their own sense of purposeful behavior. This list is comprised only of what counts as the economic means of making money, end quote. It's no wonder that the umbrella doesn't include the political means since that would defeat the entire purpose of it. Again, to reiterate, he didn't even take the time to open it and he expects me to provide him with the same respect. Notice also I made an assumption that activism only involves reformism and that anything not reformist, like direct action, is not activism. This is ironic because even reformists don't agree on what uh, constitutes activism. 
It's also worth a mention that he does exercise property rights over his own page, and rightfully so, although he shouldn't be surprised when he hears dissenting opinions, as I am not on my own page. Enter Argumentation Ethics. Real briefly, Hoppe's argumentation ethics postulates that any individual who argues against property rights, whether verbally or over the internet, must first exercise the implicit ownership of their own body, uh, for example the use of their mouth, brain, vocal cords, etc., which if done would result in a performative contradiction. That said, he has surely exercised his self-ownership through the act of argumentation and his explicit recognition of his personal Facebook. Although John is a member of the Libertarian Party, an organization that specifically advocates for theft, taxation, by way of coercion and the use of force, John finds himself in what Hoppe calls a performative contradiction. To put that in a form of a statement, it would be similar to him saying private property is illegitimate. See the problem? Conclusion To reiterate, it is not admirable nor consistent to advocate for limited governments. That, in and of itself, is a contradiction in terms much like consensual rape or voluntary robbery. Anytime the seed of authoritarianism has been planted, no matter how small it begins with, it has always grown destructive of person and property. That is, if you don't count the, viol the violations of person and property inherent in, say, the 1787 Federal Constitution. I think Hoppe puts it best. Quote, a tax-funded life and property protection agency is a contradiction in terms. An expropriating property protector. End quote. I'm sure the MCLP is well-intentioned. That possibly being the case, I don't want this, co this content to seem like a string of ad hominems, and it surely is not. If it was, I wouldn't bother with redacting his personally identifiable information. Rather, I'm pointing out the flaws and contradictions within their fallacious reasoning in hopes of completely dismantling the LP, that LP chapter so that real strides can be taken to restore liberty instead of subjugating themselves before their supposed masters. That said, for some time I've been looking for fellow champions of liberty in the area, and I've been unsuccessful thus far. Whether it be the mindless socialist millennials at Illinois State University, the local LP chapter, or contract-breaking supposed friends, I will continue to push forward my efforts because the cause of true liberty of respect for person and property is a mission that I deem worthwhile. Do you? You've just heard Bullshit Attempts at Salvaging Menarchism, another saga involving the local LP chapter. Originally published at libertyunderattack.com on March 23, 2016, and read to you by the author.